This is why his guy said, what you see you? Here's the Zelle information. It's running at the bottom of the screen. It's the telephone number, which is 602-920-0120. That's the Zelle information. That's the number uh, or Dr. David Hines' um, email address. It's running at the bottom of the screen. Even if you got to put a little $5, a little $10, whatever it is, do it, please. It is important that you do that. And Dr. Hines, uh, let's go to this. A child shall be laid and the file relating to the report and investigation shall be sent to the Director of Public Prosecution for advice. So within three months, you have to do all of that. Not for um, Mandel Moore to tell us that there is no, um, what do you say? No credible evidence to um, charge. And again, yes, um, Carl, imagine that a report made on, on around the 10th of May and the police can tell us on the 24th of May, that's 14 days after, that they conducted an investigation and there is no, there's insufficient evidence um, to charge uh, Dharam Lala. One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to the flight. Now, if you haven't already, take some time out, press that thumbs up button and subscribe so that you'll stay updated on all these entertaining, trending topics in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. To support Kadaki Amsterdam, because it is not easy for his folks to travel back. Folks, if you wish to put a little thing to support Kadaki Amsterdam, because it is not easy for his folks to travel back and forth from Buxton to Georgetown and wherever they're hiding him and all these sort of things. It is not easy, guys. It is not easy. There is this Zell information there running at the bottom of the screen. I don't know if Dr. Hines, you can pin that on because I'm not, not getting the full access that I should uh, since I joined you. you um, I joined you this morning. But here's the, Zell in, here's the Zell information. It's running at the bottom of the screen. It's the telephone number, which is 602-920-0120. That's the Zell information. That's the number uh, or Dr. David Hines' um, email address. It's running at the bottom of the screen. Even if you got to put a little $5, a little $10, whatever it is, do it, please. It is important that you do that. And Dr. Hines, uh, let's go to this um, alleged threat to Kaichur News that nothing ever happened. Kadaki didn't go. He didn't threaten anybody. He didn't threaten violence. He says he doesn't support that at all. He was disgusted by that caller. And so Kaichur News owner went with his lawyer, Ramjatan, to report this alleged threat, this threat, Allegedly, sorry, not alleged threat, the threat allegedly made by Anil Nandala. He went to the police and guess what the police did? Absolutely nothing. But let's go to this, um, let's go to this here. This conversation, allegedly, allegedly, by An Anil Nandala, who sits there as the attorney general. Everybody does have a newspaper to use as a weapon. And, uh, I told Adam, I said, Adam, people can't talk weapons. Right? They don't have they have weapons. And when you continue to attack people like that, and they have no way of responding, they will just work with their weapons. Who's going to say fuck him to a fancy office? And what comes to do? Okay, Dr. Hines, that voice is alleged to be the voice of Anil Nandalal, who's pretending to be a priest, a pandit, or a meiji now is talking about moral responsibility of talk show hosts. Yet he forgot his responsibility and assuming that that's his voice because he says now he buys an all kind of thing, right? He, and, and the police did nothing about it. But here it is, uh, assuming that that's his voice. And come on, it's Guyana. Here it is that he's saying that Kaichur News, they get a newspaper, but people get weapons. And people now go, they go go down to Kaicho News Office and then go use them weapons. Dr. Heights. It is very clear. 
and he's using the logic to say that people are got a newspaper, so they're going to use means at their disposal, <laughs> meaning that people express their frustration in ways that they see fit. Here, what he's doing, he is actually inciting people to go and to commit violence against. against. He's not saying, look, I understand people are frustrated and they are going to say things, but I don't agree with it. He's telling Kaicho News that people are frustrated and that they are going to come and they are going to do what they are doing. And in that sense, that is incitement to violence. What happened in Kinaki case is the complete opposite. Is that yes, that the person seems frustrated who called in, but Kidaki said, that's not the way to go. I do not agree with it. On the other hand, that person in that call is really threatening Kaijo News to say people are going to come at you and, and in many regards approving of it. That is the big difference. You know, and that, that Dr. Himes is serious threat. Yes. Yes, and Anil, has to, Anil hasn't uh, confirmed that that is his voice, but we live in Guyana. It's up to the listeners to decide whether they believe that that is Anil's voice or not. But the threat of violence, direct threat of violence, to say that a newspaper cannot publish certain things, and when they publish certain things, people get weapons, and people go use their weapons. Now, let us, and he was obviously frustrated. He was not only assuming that that's him again, <laughs> he said it's not he, right? But uh, the, the person was very frustrated to talk about violence. Now, even if people are frustrated, Dr. Hines, I know the, these are serious times. Under the PVP regime, contain yourself. When you call into programs, contain yourself. And back to Kadaki Amsterdam, Kadaki Amsterdam was obviously, obviously not in support of that caller. Um, Dr. Heinz, let's let's just go right back to this voice that is supposed to be Anil's, but Anil said Nahi. Let's go back to it. Well, he doesn't have a newspaper to use as a weapon. Yes, sir. I told Adam, I said Adam, people got weapons. Right? They don't have newspaper to use as a weapon. They got weapons. And when you continue to attack people like that, and they have no way of responding, they will just work with their weapon. Who's going to say, fuck him, it's a street office? And what comes to do? And he don't say, Peter will Peter not pay for fucking violence. They want me. But tell you, but tell you, you know, but tell you, honestly, man to man, that will happen too. Man to man, I tell you, man to man, that will happen soon. And listeners, nothing, absolutely nothing came out of that. Nothing at all. But some of you who might be in the audience were cussing us about this uh, cybercrime bill. Uh, Why well, y'all don't shut your mouth? Uh, let the bill be as it is and all manner of things. But hey, during the coalition, though, even before the passage of the cybercrime bill, I have never seen so many calls for assassination of a president. Never before. Well, as a youngster, I, I grew up under uh, PNC Burnham. And so um, I didn't know much in terms of what the WPA was attempting to do. Well, they said that they weren't. Some said that they were. But I don't know. This is not about discussing that. But the point that I'm making, I have never, never, as we say in Guyana, in my born life, saw so many talks of assassinating and killing a president. Never before. Never, never in Guyana. But David Granger had a lot of those threats, lots and lots of threats. Hence the reason for the uh, cybercrime bill. Now, I don't agree with some things in the cybercrime bill, but every society, you have to have law and order. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. But what the hypocritical, uh, the comical PPP did, they argued against the cyber uh, sedition part, and that was amended, mind you, to the... To the coalition's credit, they amended that part. Now, during that time in 2018 and so, the PPP argued brazenly that, hey, sedition is outdated and they have never charged anyone with sedition and all manner of things. Lie, lie, lie. But what could we expect from the PPP regime? Huh? 
Ms. Booker, uh, um, Mary Hamilton, um, Civic, Mabel Sital, Victor Ben, Tyrone Peters. What can we expect, Gladys Pissar, from the PPP? They have to lie without lying. They cannot exist. Lying and corruption and racism, you name it, that those are the hallmarks of the PPP regime. They cannot exist without that. But look, a lady, an old man, a prisoner, and all these people, even allegations of some members, serving members of the Guyana police force who were part, allegations, mind you, allegations were part of a plot to assassinate President David Arthur Granger. Of course, they denied it. And you didn't expect them to come forward and say, well, hey, it is true. Of course, they are going to deny it. And they did. They denied it. They said, no, 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 no. Not true at all. Not true at all. This is it. Back in 2017, police force denies senior ranks planning to assassinate President Granger. Senior ranks. The allegations that senior ranks were planning to assassinate. And then you had a guy, uh, said to be a business guy. This is what Gibraltar, I believe his name is. And he came out publicly and he said on Travis Chase interview that, uh, look, he was offered, allegedly, he's claiming that he was offered $7 million to assassinate President David Arthur Granger. $7 million. And then there was this woman, she was uh, acquitted in the... Uh, she didn't go to jail for long or whatever, Bibi Safura Salim. And she said on her Facebook page, and it was argued by her lawyer, uh, Glenn Hanuman, but no, 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 this lady's not computer literate and all manner of things. And the magistrate said, even after, even after what appeared on her Facebook page, uh, that Granger, quote unquote, quote unquote, that Granger needs a B-U-L-L-E-T to his head or something to that effect. But the magistrate said that no, 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 no. That doesn't constitute any form of incitement or whatever. And so the matter was dismissed. She was charged under the Racial Hostility Act. It was dismissed and she went home free. Free. The point that I'm making all these all these attempts, all these talks about assassinations, not necessarily attempts, but talks about assassination of David Granger as president. It didn't stop there, guys. Look at this guy, 65 years old, 65 years old, Motilal Balkaram, elderly man charged with threatening the life of President Granger. All of these things happened under the coalition government. But at no time did any one of these guys were charged with sedition. They were not charged with treason or nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. And so this was rampant. They were like running like wildfire, irresponsible and all these things. Nothing compared to what the PVP is uh, claiming that people in the opposition doing. No, 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 no. These guys were brazen, brazen in their attacks. Uh, of course, you know, allegations and it was it went to court, they were acquitted and all manner of things, but they weren't charged with treason and sedition and things like that. But let's get to this guy. This guy was a prisoner at the time. And so according to information, mind you, because in the prison, they will uh, they're allowed a phone call. So you walk out to the front, uh, the front area and you get to use the phone for two minutes, three minutes. And if you're nice to the prison guard or the warder, uh, you can get an extra minute or two and you can probably give a little, whatever, I'm not snitching on any, I'm not supposed to do that, but these things happen. But this guy made a phone call, Alim Ali, Alim Ali, Alim Ali, from prison. He called and he said that um, there was a bomb and, and set to bomb up David Granger, who was president at the time. I am walking you guys through the process and what they did to the coalition and David Granger as president of the country. And none of these guys, absolutely none, none, none. Sorry, I sound like Donald Trump. None of them were ever charged with sedition or treason. 
And this guy, look, he cried in the courtroom. He, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he apologized to the court. He pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to threatening language for so one month. And the other, in terms of calling in a bomb, he was sentenced to about four or five or maybe six months in prison. And that's it. So lots and lots and hey guys, you know, we can go on and on and on. And just to show you guys how hypocritical the PVP regime is. Now, let me take you guys to another situation. Many of you remember this, right? I'll let the blue, 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 right? We gonna have a grand time, oh light tonight, oh light to oh let the blow, blow, blow. Blow blow got blow by most condom one come out. No fucking come out no. Few moments later. We gonna have a grand time in the lock up. In the lock up. Daddy blow blow blow. They got blow by blow blow no in the lock ups. <laughs> I let it blow blow blow. Can you imagine that happening under under the PPP with all those guns? Did you guys see those guns? Speaking of guns. I hope the GDF can answer. We'll get back to those guns. One love, Delta 9 family. Welcome back to the flight. So we know who made that call, you know. We're trying to figure out on the ground right now in Guyana. We are trying to ascertain who made that call. Somebody make that call. It seems like somebody want to come TV off the air. It seems like someone is benefiting from the opportunities of him not being able to voice his opinions and so many Guyanese that would call in every morning. Something is seriously going on here because let me contemplate. This is a civil matter originally. This is a civil matter allegedly. Now in no case, shape or form should you be held for such a long period of time in accordance with the law on a civil matter. This situation right here, man, is something that we cannot allow to just get brushed aside and it's just another story tomorrow we move forward with what's going on. It's a repetitive thing going on over and over in Guyana and to be honest with you is generations now it's going on because they do it to Sharma, they do it to Clem David, they do it to Mark and so many others, they do it to Freddie, you know so many other people who choose to have a voice or an opinion that might not be the opinion that they might popularly hold. So it seems like somebody make a call somebody make a call we know who make the call but it seems like allegedly somebody make a call and say hey the one there ain't coming out the one there old oh, pony the one there hey seven or two the one there till i call you holy them type of thing allegedly how much longer can Guyana really function and progress in a real way if these things are allowed to continue? No. Too much of this. Too much and too many to mention. No. Top Cop Slow is going to expose something as well in another high caliber trending matter right now on the ground. Right now on the ground in Guyana, other things are trending too, you know. Other things are trending too in Guyana on the ground. So let's not forget. Let's not forget and let this not be swept under the rug by the incident that's going on and so many other incidents that's going on. But the top cop himself, slow, is going to expose the verdict. He's going to expose the outcome of what went down allegedly allegedly in the Dharam Lal case, he's going to expose allegedly what went down in this popular incident. He is going to expose the laws in comparison to what went down. And he's going to show us, look, 
this is what the laws are and this is what actually went down Guyana what do you have to say let's get into this information let's see what the top cop is showing we and we can make our own judgment as to what actually took place what actually took place when the statement was given allegedly and the outcome that Guyana now has to live with was given was it legal or not allegedly let's get right into the information and hear from the top cop himself something else before i bring um thing let me read something else and this is a, a, a they say interesting legal opinion by ryan crawford attorney at law we know we know we know ryan a man with, who like to use a colorful language and he use it in this um release of thing he said a disclaimer started off disclaimer i don't give a flying f about your politics and you know yes f use the word i don't give a flying f about your politics this is a legal post as per news report on a certain alleged rape i noticed they said not sufficient cooperation inconsistencies etc and therefore no charge as advised by the police legal advisor the police legal advisor can't tell you what tell anyone whether to charge anyone under the sexual offenses act section 41 said the file shall go to the dpp for advice stop this he says stop this con and section 69 we're gonna go into section 69 in the short while and section 69 does not require cooperation he said i am pissed because god knows how many other cases the files never made it to the dpp and people were charged or were not charged. This country justice system is shit, I swear. That is what a liar wrote over the weekend. That is what a liar wrote over the weekend. And then to, 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 to go further, to, to continue there, they're saying about cooperation. In other words, they tell you, oh, they interviewed witnesses and the witnesses put it in some other position. Um, well, not a certain position because if it's a rape, allegation you talk about position we might assume that you're talking about sexual positions put him at another location they put him at another lo location that is what i'm saying but remember again this law is so draconian that the law says that there is no need for cooperation in other words you never forget nobody for support your story nobody and here let me read let me read let me put up section 69 let hear what section 69 says section 69 of the sexual offenses act same act we're talking about they said no cooperation of the evidence of the complainant or the sworn or unsworn evidence of a child shall be required for a conviction for of an offense under this act and the judge shall not direct the jury that it is unsafe to find the accused guilty in the absence of cooperation so what did what what did so i, I, I want to get on like ryan crawford but this is not them program them though what did so and so mandel more telling people what this so and so about um cooperation because that's what i'm saying our story wasn't supported by these people who they interviewed and they put the land at a different location and all of that they're telling us the law says there is no need for cooperation and therefore, in this case, once the report has been made, once the statement is provided um, by, by the victim, that may very well be sufficient for you to bring a charge. That may very well be sufficient. But they don't do that. And as we said, they don't do no investigation. They conduct an inquiry because they are talking about um, the credibility of witnesses and inconsistencies. Them things for the inquiry. Them things for inquiry. Those things are for an inquiry those things are for an inquiry not for mandel moore and the police to decide especially we're talking here specifically in relation to the sexual offenses act that is what it says it says that once a complaint is made you have to investigate collect statements and all of that and it is saying you investigate and you can charge it gives you the authority according to the act it gives the police the authority to charge without reference to the DPP. So you're charged within three months. 
and then it says that if you don't charge within three months then you have to send the file to the dpp for legal advice let me put that back up again so you can show mandel moore what the law says let me put it up here again hear what it says again right it's saying for one where an offense under this act is reported to the police the police shall in every case record the report and conduct an investigation so once the report is made crime book you make a uh, you record the report in your crime book and again we explained to you that at the station the person who go there the person who's taking the report might not be someone who's um, capable or competent to write in the crime book so they write in the occurrence book or they even write in the diary and then the more experienced people are going to transfer it to the crime book because a crime is being reported they put it in the crime book so you make the report in the crime book and you have to conduct an investigation you have to conduct not an inquiry you conduct an investigation and here what section two says within three months of the complaint being made under this section a a charge shall be laid in respect of the report and b the file relating to the report and investigation shall be sent so within i might have said i might have interpreted this thing a little um wrong in a while ago but it's saying that within these three months a child shall be laid and the file relating to the report and investigation shall be sent to the director of public prosecution for advice so within three months you have to do all of that not for um mandel moore to tell us that there is no um what you said no credible evidence to um charge and again yes um carl imagine that a report made on on around the 10th of may and the police can tell us on the 24th of may just 14 days after that they conducted an investigation and there is no there is insufficient evidence um to charge uh at some point we have to make a decision at some point there has to be a genuine raise a genuine elevation in the morale of the persons who are left to enforce the law the persons who hold that authority to say look we're gonna keep order in the country the persons who are honored with the right to make sure that things stay in place in the country of their birth we cannot we cannot move forward in these types of ways in what kind of ways you're asking this type of way this kind of way guyana and the diaspora take a good look at what's going on on the ground look at what's going on on the ground right now and if you haven't already if you have not already please take a moment right now and hit that thumbs up button and boost the video in the algorithm so that everyone will be able to stay updated with these trending topics with these topics that persons would rather not trend we want to make sure that they stay in the headlines we want to make sure that everyone knows what's going on on the ground in guyana and the diaspora stays updated one love and do Everybody get in video, buddy. Everybody video. Everybody video. What am I do? What am I do? What am I do? What am I do? Lashy man, yeah, man. Lashy, 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 Kelly. Lashy, you lashy man. Lashy, yeah, lashy. The man do nothing. The man do not nothing. Coffee man, bitty. You are bitty. Bro, the man do nothing. I you left the fucking man, boy? I you left the man, buddy? The man has moved wrong, boy. The man do nothing. The man in a yard. The man do nothing. You are disrespectful, boy, but it's not done, sir. Because people know people, all of you know people. It's not done, sir. You feel we know people? You are thieving people. You are kidnapping the fucking man. That's what you are doing. That's kidnap. That's kidnap. Lashi man, you are naki. You are naki. Lose my fucking neck, boy. Hey, lose my neck, yo. Lose my ear.
Losing my ear, buddy. Losing my ear, buddy. Losing my head. Don't laugh, boy. Lose the man. Monkey does know. Hey, bye, yo. This is why he's got said. What you see, you? We pull the thing wrong now, my fucking neck, dog. Look, I know I ain't able to buy. Dog, I know I ain't able to buy. But the man do nothing, but the dog, you know the man do nothing, but the man do nothing. You know the man do nothing, but the man do nothing. The man do nothing. Nothing, the man down a yard. The man do nothing. He talk to the man around too. The man do nothing. But you better lose the man if you are no good for y'all. Lose the man. Y'all let the man go away. The man do y'all nothing. The man disrespect y'all. Y'all run. Y'all pull out the man out of yard. The man never drive upon the road, buddy. Yeah, they are not fair, Dougley. You know the body, you see senior man, but you know the man and do nothing. Dougley, you know you got your strike back, Dougley, but they just bully you somebody. Dougley, they just run. Dougley, we know you, buddy. The man do nothing. We run the man do. You tell the man drive on the man drinking alcohol. Dougley, you move around the body. Dougley, you move around, Dougley. You down there like your fucking body, boy. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. I believe some of these things that are done, uh, that, that do, they're doing, uh, they are deliberately trying to do things so that Daimla gets the benefit, and at the end of the day, they get the politically aligned DPP to say that because of these uh, mistakes or because of these reasons, no child should be brought against the